Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Once again, I welcome you all to the service this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I welcome you all into the service this morning on behalf of my husband who is away in Dallas, and on behalf of the leadership of the church, uh, welcome to the presence of God. I can feel the presence of God already, and I know that God is here this morning. And I just want us to press in and just look unto Him. Don't look at me. Look unto God. And I want to welcome the new visitors. If you are coming here for the first time, I welcome you to Victory Court. You're welcome in Jesus' name. Yeah. I especially want to welcome my auntie and my uncle, uh, my own auntie. Yeah. <laughs> I want to welcome Pachopo and Mrs. Pachopo and my cousin. And I'm very glad to see you. God for the godly heritage that we have. The, 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 the faith that has been delivered to us is being passed even to pass to all our generation. We are passing it to our children Amen. and their eyes can see. So I welcome you and I'm honored to have you here. You're welcome. Thank you very much, everybody. You're welcome. Let's pray. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning. We give you glory, we give you honor. We give you adoration because you are God. Thank you for bringing us into your presence. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord for your word, the word of life. We exalt your name. This morning, we just pray that you will open the windows of heaven Amen. and speak to our hearts, O oh God. Yes. Lord, we want to hear you. We want to hear your voice. We want to, to speak to our situations. We want you to minister life even unto us in every area that we need you. Because we know that we need you. We appreciate you. Thank you for your love. And as we go forward today, we pray that the Holy Spirit will visit with us. Amen. And visit us in every area of our lives that Amen. we need your visitation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I, I just want to Thank God for today, for what God is doing in our lives. In the last few months, we have witnessed God's power in the midst of this place. We have witnessed God's miracle, the miraculous. We have witnessed his provision. We have witnessed his deliverance. He has spoken to us, and he has sent his servants to us, different kind of people. Actually, earlier this year, we started with uh, prophetic prayers. God has God led us through certain time to pray for this um, nation, to pray for this uh, region, the Pacific Northwest. And we believe that God is the one that has led us. And he spoke to our hearts. He gave us some promises. He gave us some words, which we know that these words will not just go, but it will accomplish what it has been sent for. And we know that God is faithful. And the Bible says that his promises, they are yea and amen. And when God promises, he brings to pass. Amen. And individually, I know that the Lord has spoken to our hearts. In one area or the other, he has given us his promises. And he has said, you know, what, who sent his words to us, what he wants to do in our lives. And also, we can see that he sent his servants to us. It's not by accident that in June, the, um, that the GO visited um, Vancouver, Washington. And it's a lot of us who went and it declared new beginning. It declared the word of God. And at the same time, we had our pastor from uh, Lagos, Pastor Pande, and his wife visited us and he spoke. And all these words, you know, we were all excited and bubbling in the Lord and just waiting, you know, for the promises of God, for the word of God to come to pass. And we had the chairman visiting us two times. 
within this year. And it's been a blessing. I mean, how, how many are, are we? Who, who, who are we before the president? We're just, it's just God has, in his mercy has decided to visit us. And even on our own, you know, every time we need them to pray, every time we try to read the word of God, God always give us the word and say, look, son, daughter, this is my word to you and I will bring it to pass. And this, 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 so we are blessed. We have been blessed. We are yeah. highly blessed Amen. By, by the Lord. And God is faithful. But, I mean, the thing is that, so this morning, I, 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 I just want to encourage us. And I want to speak on how we can, how, you know, we need to hold on to the promises of God. Holding on to the promises of God. Because his promises, when he promise, he bring it to pass. Amen. So there is need for us. Not, you know, I mean, when we are excited, we had a lot of people in this place that was established that within this place could not even contain us. When we have the world and we are just excited to move forward to do, but at the, in the midst of, of that, also, when it seems as if all the things that have been spoken, I, I'm yet to see it. It's yet, it's yet to manifest in my life. I've, I've not really seen this. There is, I mean, sometimes our heart kind of, um, sometimes you come to the low level. Sometimes it seems as if, you know, can I move forward? I have prayed, I have fasted, God has promised me I'm holding on to it. But at the same time, what God still wants us to do is to hold on. We have the promises of expansion. He promised that he will expand us. He promised that he's taking us to the new level. He's promised us that he's going to increase us. He can promise of promotion. Promotion in our spiritual lives. Promotion in our physical lives. Promotion on every side. But sometimes we have to wait. We have to wait. And the process of waiting can be a little bit challenging. Because at every day we face challenges. We face different kind of things. So the thing is that, my question this morning is that what should be our response? What should be our attitude? When it seems as if, you know, we are waiting on the Lord for one thing or the other, and it seems as if they are not coming as we want it to be. Not that they are not coming at all, but sometimes we want it our own way. Sometimes we want it now. You know, just like a child that is, you know, waiting to get a cookie from the mom. It's like, I want it now. You know, no other language, you know, she doesn't want to think of any other language. It's that I just want it now. But God knows the best for us. He has his own timing. And we need to be able to key in to the, to the promise, to the purpose of God and to the timing of God. You know, because we know that he never fails. Amen. He never disappoints. Amen. And he will bring it to pass in our lives. Amen. So I don't know what it is, you know, God has spoken to you. I don't know, I know what God has spoken to me. I know what God has spoken to us in this church. But I just want us to, uh, I, I want us to just hang out with me this morning. And let's see. I mean, we have a lot of examples in the Bible. So I was, as I was thinking about this, you know, one word that keeps coming to me is found in Genesis chapter 18. And it's uh, actually verse 14. It said, is, there, is anything too hard for the Lord? You know, he said, is anything to us? I went to the Bible and I look at all the places that the Bible said it. And that is just the word that came to my mind. That whatever may be that we are waiting on for, whatever may be that even as a church that we are looking to God to do, is what to run this morning is that is anything too hard for me to do. And that is the Lord speaking to us. That is the Lord speaking to our situation. And if you go, um, I went and read from um, verse 1. Let's open our Bibles to Genesis chapter 18. And I'm going to read from 18 to 15. It said, The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Manu, while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bow low to the ground. He said, if I have found favor in your heart and your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought. And then 
you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way. Now that you have come to your servants, very well, they answered, do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent up to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three sheets of fine flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the head and selected a choice tender calf and get, gave it to a servant who ordered to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set it before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife Sarah? They asked him. There in the tent, he said. Then the Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now, Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already old and were well advanced in age, in, in years. And Sarah was past the age of childbearing, so Sarah laughed to herself as she talked. After I am worn out and my master is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah love and say, Will I really have a child? Now that I am old, is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid. She saw, she lied, and, and said, I did not laugh, but he said, yes, you did laugh. I mean, when I looked at it, there are so many lessons that we can learn. I mean, always in the, our, our father Abraham, who um, is the patriarch. So many things that we can learn in this place. But I mean, one thing that kept coming to me is that God gave Abraham and Sarah promise of his son. And how old were they? They were already, you know, far beyond age, 90. Abraham was 95. You know, so they, they, they have been blessed. They have seen, you know, the blessings of God, but they are yet, they were yet to see the promises of God. There is blessing, there is a promise. You know, so they, they I mean, they've seen everything. And the same way we are, you know, sometimes we, we are blessed. We've been blessed in heavenly places with all spiritual blessings. We have all the blessings, all the promises. We have all the financial blessings in the career and everything, but there's still a promise. There's a promise. There's something that God has promised. And, you know, we, we, it's as if we have not seen it. It's, it's not coming, you know. But God appeared to him. If we look at it, uh, this place, the Bible says that God appeared to him in the heat of the tent. And look at it. In the heat of the tent. And, I mean, in, in, in our situations, also, if we look at it, the heat, the heat of the day, you know, we face our challenges. We face our situations. There are so many things in our environment that, you know, makes it not to be conducive for us to be able to wait for the promises of God. Yes, I have the job. You know, the pay is coming. But at the same time, I'm not satisfied because there's something that God has said to my heart. And I really want to, you know, to, to I want it to come to pass. So, so many things just, you know, uh, in, 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 that we face, so many, you know, uh, things in our environment that just bring challenges onto us. Uh, this, I, I, I have a, we have a friend who is a medical doctor from Nigeria. You know, he came to the United States about almost 20 years ago. By the time he came, he had already practiced for about 15 years in Nigeria as a medical doctor. Of course, he came here with his family and he was expecting, waiting to be able to practice as a doctor. So he did the exam because he came with four children and he had to go to work in the grocery store to be able to put meat and food on the table for the children. And, this, and it was not easy at all. And he still has to sit down and write the exam and pass the exam before he can practice as a doctor. I mean, he, can, he sees his mate. He did the exam once, second, the third time, he didn't pass the exam. And he was already over 40 years before he came. So he started he had to go to the university to do master's in public health. 
you know, to be able to survive. It was so sad. He would go to church, just sit at the back, read and read and read and read. I'm a doctor. Nobody could even call him a doctor in America because, I mean, they didn't, they only, they, nobody know him as a doctor. And all his friends, you know, they were working, building mansions and everything, and in, in the midst of them, it was just so sad. But this man did not give up. Man. He said, you know, I am a doctor. I know what I went through in Nigeria to become a doctor. And I wonder, he has even become a, a consultant. Even in Nigeria, he said he's not going to. So when he goes to work, Mr. So 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 so, he doesn't care. He will just stay there. You know, he was working with the Washington uh, University in St. Louis. And after a while, he kept doing the exam. And to the glory of God, he passed the exam. Man. And we give glory to God because you know God is faithful. Amen. He is faithful, Amen. and He did not give up. And so the the other problem is that they said, "Oh, you're already of um, your age. They're looking for young doctors." After almost um, at this time, it was almost 50 years old, and it's like your experience has passed. You know, you I mean, you don't even know what is going on right now. It will apply. They will not take him. It will apply. They will not take him. So he keep applying. He didn't give up, but uh, to the glory of God, this uh, earlier this year, I, I, we got a call that he got a placement, and God brought to pass His promises in His life. You know, I'm saying this to let us know that no matter how old we have, that no matter how old the problem has stayed, whatever may be the situation, you know, let's hold on to the promises of God. Let hold, let's hold on and not give up. You know, because God will always come true. This man, just like the Bible says that in the heat of the day, God appeared to Abraham. He will not leave us nor forsake us. He will always come to say, I love you. He will always come to say, look, I care. Even if it seems that your neighbor does not care, even if it means, you know, people are making jest of you, but God, he cares. So even in the midst of our challenges, it's not easy. You know, to sit over and over, over an exam and say, because I just wanted to. Now, it came to a point, he said, it wasn't even because of the money anymore. It's not because of the money, but because I know my God is, I serve a living God. Who, we know, who does not fail? My God never fails. You know, so he held on to the promises of God and the Lord came true. And I, last week I was reading, I was just looking through my. We moved to a new place. I was looking through the garage and I was looking at all the magazines that I had. And I, there was this uh, article that came out in one of the Nigerian newspapers of this woman who got married at the age of 46. Mm. Of course, I mean, we all know that even at the age of 46, it's already beyond time, you know, for women. And this man, I mean, this woman got married. And everybody was like, we thank God for companionship, at least he's married and things like that. Maybe some people will know this story, you know. And it's, she said she knows that God is going to give her a child. And she started trying, you know. So I read for nine times. This woman tried this uh, fertilization program that they do. Nine times. I know people have gone through just once. It's painful. It's not easy. It, it does a challenge, it, I mean, but it will not give up. It tried in all over the world, in Britain, in America, in South Africa, in, and I think the, at the ninth time, I mean, the, the, the time it will come to, I think it was even in Nigeria that God answered the prayer. You know, so he has gone all over the world, but he kept on holding on that God will do my own. God will give me a son, and you know, God did it. At the age of 39, 49, he had a son. So let's hold on to the promises of God. So I don't know what is our own situation this morning. I just want us to know that God will not leave you nor forsake you. Amen. I mean, it may, be, it may be little. We have challenges. It's different from each other. Every man, we, have, we, all, we all have challenges. Yours may be different from mine. Some is sickness. I mean, I, I remember my dad again. I mean, I can never be, I mean, testimony. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Testimony exalts me. It leads me up. It helps me. My dad, I remember, is, I mean, he's is, is passed away now. He was sick and he nearly died. 
And they told him because of his age, they were going to operate on him because he couldn't pass urine, he couldn't do anything anymore. And they said, you know, he, he has like three months or so to leave. And that it should just, if they do the operation, he's not going to be able to survive it. And my dad, I want to visit him. He said, I, I am not going to die of this sickness. Amen. And that was what he said. He kept, you know, proclaiming and, you know, just saying it, I will not die of this sickness. You know, that even if I'm going to die, I will die the natural death and go home. And all hope was lost. And they brought him back home. So, he, I said, what? Just one day, he said it was just that it was just as if somebody came. You know, something just came and pushed the catheter out, pushed everything out, and that everything that has been blocking it, all the obstruction, just pushed out and you know just gushed away. And that was where deliverance came. Yeah. And you know, without the help of the doctor, without the help of um, any operation or whatever, he lived and he survived. You know, even though they said he had like three months to live. I think he still lives for how many years after that? So by the time he would die, it wasn't that sickness. There's power in the word of God. Amen. There's power in confession. Amen. When we confess and we say, you know, this is what the Lord says, it will bring it to pass in our lives. So let's learn, you know, to just focus our attention onto him. One other thing that we saw Abraham did in this place is that he looked up. He looked up. Situations of life want us to look down. Even circumstances, our environment, even people that surround us, even our colleagues, our friends, they want us to look down. That's the plan of the enemy. But the Lord wants us to look up. As long as we look up unto him, and we're not looking at the situation, we're not looking at the circumstances, we will win. You know, when we remember when the, uh, Moses lifted up the staff, he says, if they look up, you know, all the people that looked up, they were saved. So everyone looked up. And that's what God wants us to do, to look up. You know, so all the, everything that is happening in our environment, let's, let's not focus our attention on him, on, on it. Let's not focus our attention on the fact that, you know, I, this, this, is not, this is not a normal thing. This is, I mean, medically, this is not, you know, spiritually, this is not everything, everything. But let's focus our attention on God, on Jehovah who is the maker of the heaven and the heart. Let's focus our attention on, on the Lord, and he will do it, and he will bring it to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I mean, I cannot be tired of my own uh, testimony. I can never be tired. I've said it here many times. You know, how the Lord, you know, saved me. How the Lord saved me. Not only saved my life, but because he has spoken, because of the word that he spoke, you know, that he would, he would, he, I will live and I will not die to declare the word of God. Amen. And because of the word that he spoke, that I will, I you know, but that he would, that he, he would, he will bring his promises to pass in my life. That you know, I will, I will, he, 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 he brought it to pass. Amen. You know, what happened was that I mean, I got my second baby. I got pregnant. The enemy did all he could do, and. I mean, it was like, jump down and jump up and let's see where it, it, you go. Whether we call it mismanagement or uh, whatever, there's no coincidence. You know, but the enemy tried. But the Lord delivered me. I was in my pool of blood. You know, but everything happened, you know, all my uterus tore into pieces. Everything happened and I nearly died. But I didn't know, you know, all I was saying was I will live and not die. I will live to declare the glory of God. I don't know what is your health situation. You may be here today and, you know, maybe you have a situation where, you know, all, every situation that can even define all the medical prognosis, everything, you know. But God is able. Not only did I live, I lived. And they told me I can never have a child again. Mm. And I said, well... If you have only one child, at least you have some, you have. God has given me one that I don't even want to, you know. So they were just going to remove all my uterus and everything. I give all the glory to God because it's already torn into pieces. And when they suture everything together, eight, or about eight doctors had to operate on me. I, I couldn't stand up until they gave me like six pints of blood. And that was the teaching hospital in Lauren, Nigeria. 
So I nearly died. And I told them they situ everything together. So when they when I woke up and the doctor came and said, Look, um, there's no way you can even get pregnant anymore. That in case you get pregnant, please, please. He said there's no way the baby can grow. Because after they sutured everything, there was addition. Everything joined together. I don't know if anybody knows what I'm talking about. And I mean there was practically no way. So and I said, what do I want again? I already have a child, you know. I have, I mean, I have a child. What am I looking for? You know, that I don't want to. I said, you, can't, uh, you should have removed everything and just closed me up like that. I said, no, medicine is improving. It was, the, the doctor was is not even a committed Christian. He doesn't know the God he serve. He doesn't he know there is God, but he doesn't know the power in the name of Jesus. But he said, medicine is improving. You don't know where God can take you. Now, if you ever, please, you know, don't do anything. And let's see how it will be. And I said, well, I don't want him to. And everywhere we go, God will speak. And that's where I'm coming, you know, holding on to the promises of God. God will speak. I want to glorify myself in your name. I want to do this. I want to do that. But knowing my situation, I couldn't receive it. I couldn't, you know, just understand. I couldn't, it's like, God, I want to live to be able to take care of this one child that I have. But God is always saying, I want to demonstrate my power. And maybe that is your situation. The things that is happening today, it may be to the glorification of, of his holy name. That man who was born blind from the womb, they, they asked, they said, who sinned? Is he in that sin or his parents? And Jesus answered, he said, so that my name would be, the name of the, my father would be glorified. Amen. Some things happen to us, not because you have sinned, not because you are not better than, you are, I mean, your neighbor is better than you, or not because of God, for the glorification of his holy name. God wants to glorify, he wants to use us as a, as a show peace, just to show himself that he is God. You know, so it happened, and every time God speaks, and I would, I would, I would, literally was rejecting it. Are you like me, rejecting the promises of God, rejecting the word of God, and, and because I'm already old, you know, because I'm this, I'm this. I mean, I was so young, not that I was old, but at the same time, I knew what I went through. And I didn't want to go through, but he knows my pain. He knows your pain. He knows what you are going through. He know, you know, your, your conversation in the middle of the night. He knows the things that you cannot even tell anybody. He knows, he knows. You know, just hold on because it will come true. And I couldn't, I mean, I, I told my husband, I said, look, I don't want to go through that anymore. I don't want to. So, I mean, and then we had to come to, to America when we came and everything happens. And it was a long story. If I start talking about it, you know, we will not end here. But God manifested his power Amen. and I got pregnant you know by the word of the Lord and it was confirmed you know by the it was confirmed and how I was able to carry the pregnancy for eight months I had the baby at this one only up to now my understanding cannot fathom and that is our God you cannot put one to three and you know it's, it's, the Bible says it's understanding no man can fathom and that is, that is it. I, there, there was no way. And it happened. And to the glory of God, I had the baby. And I mean, not to say, some people is like, well, it's coincidence. Actually, people say that. It's coincidence. Well, it just happened. Just be careful. Don't, don't do that. And I didn't want another one. I didn't want at all. And I told them, look, just you know, cut everything and they said, ah, no, we cannot do it in this hospital. You have to go to the another hospital and do. And I wanted to go do surgery to just cut everything up. Every time I go, you know, the fear will come upon me. That what if I go to the operation and I don't survive? God saved me. And now I'm so I, I, I was, I was, I mean, I got, the fear was too much. I couldn't do anything. And again, it happened and the, another pregnancy came. The, the, the doctors were afraid. I was, I became like a, like a guinea pig for them in the same hospital. And you know, but God did it. Amen. God did it. That's all I can say. I will not uh, take our time. So God is able, and I believe today God is sending His mercy.
message to us today and assuring us that there shall be manifestation of his promises concerning our lives. Yeah. And so I, if I were you, I would say amen. Yeah. I would say amen. Yeah. And God is saying his words to us this morning and says that whatever he has said, there will be a manifestation. Amen. And it will come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. God made the promises to Abraham and he fulfilled it. And he gave them a son. So what, um, some things that I learned from the life of Abraham. The Bible says that Abraham believed God. And that's another thing that the enemy uses to, you know, it will bring doubt. When God speaks the word, he spoke to us as a church. He's going to expand us. He's going to, we're going to have with, uh, over a thousand churches in, in the world, uh, Pacific Northwest. A thousand, yeah, but the one is not even full yet. But yet God keeps telling us, I will increase, I will increase you, I will expand you, and at the same time, even us, you know, as a family, maybe you are here, you know, you you still don't even have a career, even at the age of fifty or whatever. But you know, God, days and time, you know, it, it belongs to God, and he, he, and I don't know also. So, but the Bible says Abraham believed God. So, the, my challenge to us this morning is that: Do you believe God? That what he has said he will do, he will do it. So we need to believe God. The other thing that I see in the life of Abraham is that the Bible says that he, he, he trusted that God will keep his promises. I imagine how many people would have been making jests of Abraham, you know, the father of many nations. The father of many nations. He keeps saying, God says, you know, I'll multiply you, you'll be the father of many nations. But here, no child, nothing. You know, but he trusted God. We need to trust God for every little details of our lives. We need to trust God for the ministry God has given unto us. Amen. Because the Bible says that we are all ministers. He has called us to be ministers in his presence. He has called us to be able to go into the midst of the world, to show forth the, the, the light in the midst of the darkness. He has, showed, he has called us. He didn't just call you into your profession. There must be a reason. And he wants us to, to be the light in the place that he has placed us. But he trusted God. So will you trust God today that God who has called me will keep his promises. I will encourage us to trust God just like Abraham did. And the next thing is that Abraham had to wait patiently for God's timing. I talked about timing the other time. I mean, I don't know what I would have done, you know, to say, even if I say, okay, I want to do this, I want to do that, but you know, it was God's timing. When you least expected, that's when it will come true. I mean, I believe that day the, uh, Abraham was just doing his own thing. God appeared to him, and three men came, and he ran to meet them. Hospitality, showing hospitality, caring. You know, so we don't know, you know, what you would do that we uh, that when we will entertain angel or when we will entertain angel, they will bring the promises of God to our lives. And you know they did all they could, not knowing who they are doing it for. But you know they wait, and it was just the timing of God. They waited patiently, and God answered them. So how do we respond to this? How do we respond to this? I um, that leads me to another story that I saw on Facebook this week. It was actually my cousin, uh, who is a medical doctor. I think will be around. 25 years old, he has been posted to a very remote village to practice medicine. And we know how it is. No equipment, no nothing. They have to operate with literally nothing. And it can actually frustrate you. You know, but in the Bible says that they that know their God, they shall be strong and do exploit. And you know, this man, this guy wrote on Facebook, I will read it for us. So, I mean, we can, I, I, I want to read it. He said, in the last few weeks, I have been more convinced of the power of God to heal. I have seen uncontrollable bleeding, prolonged, prolonged obstructed labor, unresponsive apparesia, etc. Yield to the power of prayer. In the heat of the problem, mostly in the deadly hours of the night, I have few options. I just join my heart with the patient and the nursing staff and the unusual happens. 
Now, my losses understand the power of prayer. Truly, when we call on Jesus, all things are possible. He said, God, I am so proud to be your son. And I, I mean, it just touched my heart when I read it. Actually, my husband shared it, forwarded it, and I shared it also. I mean, this is the manifestation of the power of God. God wants us to shine wherever he placed us, you know, because he is able. You know, I, 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 this is just a young doctor who went to a place where it's literally impossible to operate. You know, the environment says, you know, no. Everything says no. Some people, what they will just do is to just go around and party and do all kinds of things. But he pressed on. He waited patiently. He didn't allow the circumstances to, because we are called to show forth the light of God. You know, with all these things that, has, that is happening as a doctor, what will he do? You know, sometimes we do, I mean, but he looked up unto God. He yielded himself unto God. And God, you know, came, came through. He said in an unusual way. That's just his word. And I believe that is what God will do in our situation. Yeah. That God will come through in an unusual way. Yeah. And God, those nurses and those patients that witness the raw power of God, do you think they will, their lives will remain the same? No. They will not, their lives will not remain the same. Do you think his own life will remain the same? No. You know, when we yield on to God, when we hold on to God, and when God comes through, it builds us up. You know, then we can stand tall and we can say, Lord, I mean, if God can do this, then he can do more. Yes. If he can do this, he can do more. Yes. And then I can tell the other person that, look, I have witnessed the power of God. Right. I have witnessed, I know that God is the, is, is the living God. You know, so that is what we want to do. So what, what shall we do? We need to know. I need to know that God is at work in, in my life. And that's the number one thing that we should not forget. <coughs> That God is at work in all our lives. Amen. It doesn't matter what I'm passing through. It doesn't matter what the enemy is saying. It doesn't matter what the people are saying also. You know that God is at work in all our lives. And God is at work in my life. Let's say it, God is at work in my God life. Let's work say work it with life. boldness. And say, God, God you are at work in my life. God. And my experiences and my situation, it doesn't matter because you are at work and I know it. So the next thing we want to know is to acknowledge it. You know, sometimes we know something, but we cannot acknowledge it. We cannot even, you know, so we need to acknowledge it, that you are in, you at work in my life. So I will not be moved, you know. In the Bible says God is our refuge, our present help in time of need. And that's why we cannot be moved and acknowledge it. And so the other thing we need to do is that we are to face every challenges before us with great boldness. I mean, the, the Bible says Abraham looked up. His situation does not look up. Somebody who God has promised, you will have a son. You will have this, you will do this, you will do that. And yet, even when uh, he came with uh, a lot, when they were dividing the land again, the Lord took the father's, the nicest place, and he was left with the fallow crowned. You know, but God did, what, what did God do? God blessed the land again. So, if, uh, even if we did well, we do this and people are you know, trying to pull us down. Let us know that in the places of our challenges, that you know, let's, let's move forward with, with great boldness, with God, great boldness, knowing that, look, you know, God is with me Amen. and I'm able. Let's look up, just like Abraham. Let's not look down. Let's look up. And the next thing is, do not hold back. He arose and attended you know, to the visitor. Sometimes the enemy comes with dejection, with depression. It's like, you know, I cannot do anything. I'm just, I wake up and all I can just do is to just cry and cry. The enemy will be laughing. He's just crying because of his problem. He's crying, you know, because of his health. He's crying because, you know, they gave him a position and the people just make it difficult at work for him to operate, to, to perform. You know, so don't hold back. Bible says that he arose and attended to the visitors. He left his problems alone. He left his, his, his concerns alone. He left all the challenges and he arose. And you know, he attended to the visitor. And then, you know, God brought answer. So let us rise up to attend to whatever God has given us to do. Amen. Let us rise up. 
to you know to to in the faces of challenges to do what to, to move forward to press in you know in our spiritual life you know some people they don't have problem with money they don't have problem with you know their god is promoting them a spiritual life i can't just get up to pray you know something will press me down i can't just get up to rise above and just you know read my bible and just move forward or is it that you know i'm shy to share my gospel the, the gospel with the Lord, I can't, it's not politically correct. I can't say it. But you know, they can tell us not to preach in the public place, but they cannot stop us to interact with people that surround us. And through the testimony, God will bring them to Christ. So let us rise up. Let's not hold up or hold on, hold back. Let's press in. Let's press in, believing that nothing is too hard for God to do. Because when we pray, if we do what if we answer us. You know, and all the promises that God has given unto us, they are yea and amen. Let us trust him. Let us trust him. Let us trust him. Let us remember. I want us to just rise up on our feet and just begin to, you know, reflect. I want us to reflect. What has God spoken to you? What are the things, you know, it may be when you are little. It may be, you know, when you are asleep. It may be through someone. It may be through the word of God. It may be that God has said, this is the height I want to take you. And I believe God brought you to this country, not, for, not, not by accident. It may be the promises that you will have a child. You know, it may be the promises that your spiritual children will, will flood their hearts. Even like the waters, like the glory of the Lord covers the world, the house and the waters covers the sea. It may be your children's children. It may be your husband that God says you will get married. And it seems as if it's you know, different kind of things. It means different kind of things to individuals. So I want you to reflect. It may be concerning your parents. It may be concerning a child that God has given unto you. The Bible says that I and the children that the Lord has given unto me, they are for, we are for signs and for wonders. It may be you know, concerning someone that you have ministered you, that you have preached to. The promises of God are here and amen. I want us to look individually. I want us to look unto God and say, God, if I know you are faithful, I know that you will never fail, you will not forsake me. It may be concerning your family. I want you to just look up unto God this morning, this afternoon. Look up. Like Abraham looked up. I want us to look up because our God is, is a call, is our present help in time of need. I want you to look up and hold on, hold on unto the promises of God. And as a church this morning, I want to challenge us. I want to challenge us not to look at our present situation because God has called us to build, to build. He has made us a builder and it, it, it will help us. The Bible says that faithful is he who has called us, it will bring it to pass. I want, us, I want you to just look on unto God, what he has called you to do. He has called you to do a specific thing in this congregation. He has called you to do something. And he has given you the job to do. And when he gives, he calls, he equips. And let us just look, let's not look at what we are seeing today. Let's not be moved by what we see. Let's be moved only by the word of God. Because the word of God says it is well. The word of God says you are healed. The word of God says it is well with you. The word of God says that this church will expand if we move forward. So I want us to hold on to the promises of God this morning. And remember, remember that he keeps his promises. Remember how he kept his promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember how he keep his promises. Remember and believe in him and trust in him. And he will bring it to pass. Father, we bless your name this morning. I want you to lift up your hands unto the Lord. And say, Lord, I hold on unto your promises. Lord, you are faithful. I hold on unto the things that you have spoken to me. And I kept it in my heart. And my heart will not wave. Because you are with me, the mighty man of valor. Oh Lord, I magnify you this morning. I know that your promises to me will come to pass. And nothing will be able to stand. Because the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? And I want to go in your power. I want to go 
with your boldness. I want to go with the assurance that you are with me. I want to go with the assurance that I will be heard and not still in my education, in my family, in my, in, in, in my job. And I want to go with the assurance that your promises are yea and amen. I lift up your holy name. I worship your name. Blessed be your name, O God. I want you to lift up yourself unto the Lord. If you are facing one, one problem or the other, and it seems as if the promises of God are, 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 are not coming, it's not coming to pass. He said, believe in him, it will not tarry. We hold on unto him and believe, just like Abraham believed, and he will bring it to pass. And he will send his word. If you are sick in your body this morning, I want you to, to believe that there is anointing to heal this morning. There is anointing to touch. There is anointing to make whole. There is anointing to make whole. And so let, let's, let's just tap in into the, 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 the anointing this morning to make everything beautiful for us. We just give you all the glory. I want us to sing, be magnified, oh Lord. Amen. 